Welcome everybody to another video, another episode of Rasistan. This is Flo, and today's topic is regarding native auxiliaries and black conquistadores, right? So when I first came across this to me, it was actually really, really interesting because I it was a concept that I, you know, didn't really think about, but as I dug more into it, and especially after my last video that I posted, it made a lot of sense, right? I know the last video got a lot of flack, got a lot of uh, comments, right, in, in, the, in the section, which is great. I, I always welcome those who disagree, of course. But this one is even more um, uh, interesting to me because when you think about the conquest of the Americas, usually the narrative is that the Spaniards and Europeans came here and just wreaked havoc and basically destroyed societies, which they did. Again, I'm not going to deny that. Like I said in the last video, they definitely did definitely did a lot of that stuff. But they could not have done that stuff without help. Okay? So, for example, when we think about the conquest of Mesoamerica, specifically Mexico Tenochtitlan, we always hear about Cortez and even smallpox, right? And the great European swords and weapons and dogs and all that stuff, which contributed to the conquest. But one thing that's often left out in this conquest is native auxiliaries, right? And what does that mean? Native allies, uh, indigenous peoples who helped in the conquest. Now, this might be troublesome for some. This might be controversial for some. But again, this is there is evidence, plenty of evidence of this. And again, I will post all the stuff in the video, the links you, so you can see them, okay? So, according to some of the sources that I read, uh, Cortez and his men, uh, those who conquered, uh, again, Mexico Tenochtitlan, uh, had at least 40,000 native allies, okay? And that's a very conservative number. Higher numbers estimate even up, up in the 200,000s, which, you know, we don't really know. But uh, a lot of these... Native allies were actually um, Tlaxcaltecas, Tlaxcala, right? And again, uh, for those of you who do know the history of Mesoamerica, you know that the Tlaxcala were rivals of the Mexica, so it would make a lot of sense as to why they would join the uh, Spanish, right? But it didn't stop there, right? You would think, well, you know, they just conquered the Mexica and that was it, and, you know, they, they would went about their way. No, it didn't stop there. As a matter of fact, a lot of these Native allies continued on further conquest of Mesoamerica, for example, Guatemala in the Mayans, uh, um, in uh, El Salvador, in Cuscatlan, if I'm correct, the, um, I think it's the Pipil natives, if I'm correct, and they continued and, and it helped the uh, Spaniards, right? So you might be thinking, well, why would, why would uh, natives even participate in this? Well, what's their motive, right? Because a lot of people think, well, natives are all united, you know, they're all trading, you know, and, and they did do some of that stuff, obviously. But for the most part, natives, just like Europeans or Africans or all over the world, they were not a unified people. They, they were different nations. So they warred with each other. They had rivalries. They saw these, each other as, you know, foreigners to some extent, because again, they all spoke different languages. Very similar in some cases, but um, they were not all best friends like people think. Uh, today, and right? Uh, indigenous unity is only possible today because of the European conquest of the Americas. And again, you know, natives also contributed to that. Okay, so again, uh, and they were just, they were not just, uh, you know, Tlaxcalteca, they were also Mexica, also, uh, you know, um, participated in some of these conquests, right? Uh, and uh, the Purepecha kingdom, uh, you had uh, Mixtecas, you had um, many other under natives that contributed to this conquest, right? Again, you have to ask yourself why. One was, again, they had rivalries with these people, but also, according to, some, to, to the book that I read, uh, it said that they were trying to settle old pre-Hispanic debts or, or quarrels they had. So they were trying to, to uh, you know, get rid of those things. So it makes sense, Right. And some of these native peoples were also awarded land. They were awarded land grants, like some of the famous Spanish conquistadors. Um, 
So again, it's it's important to know that because when we think about the conquest of, of Mexico and the Americas, really, we give way too much credit to Europeans and their weapons and, uh, you know, whatever. So we have to understand that it, it would not have been possible without the native people that this conquest happened. And again, in hindsight, you think, well, why would they do that? Right. Because some of them eventually did lose these lands or didn't benefit from the conquest, you know, overall. But at the time, they were not thinking about that. They were thinking about short term goals. Right. Short short term results. Right. And another group that I wanted to talk about again was the black conquistadores, conquistadores. Right. Uh, and the majority of the first black conquistadors came from Africa, specifically from Africa. Right. Those who were free were from North Africa, Moroccans to be exact, and those who were not free were captured slaves in West Africa that were eventually taken uh, on these conquests, right? One of the most famous ones is Juan Garrido, obviously, right? He's one. He's the one that conquered, helped conquer uh, the Caribbean and also uh, Mesoamerica, right? Uh, specifically, uh, again, Mexico, Tenochtitlan, um, and you have others like Esteban, right, who uh, went from Cuba to Florida. You have uh, Juan Valiente, uh, went from Central and South America, right? So there's, I think, about 12 famous ones if, if, you, uh, if you actually look into it. But again, this is really interesting because, again, when we think about the conquest of Mesoamerica, of the Americas, we think about Europeans just wreaking havoc, but it was way more complex than that. And I wanted to share that because, again, the point of this, this whole thing is to, to dispel narratives. This is why I have my platform. And to show that things were not as easy or as, um, you know, the way people paint them, right? And you have to think about why people would do something like that. Why would you just put a specific group to say this is what happened, right? Well, back in the day, right, you would Europeans would obviously give themselves credit to say, well, look what we did to these little, little Indians or, you know, whatever, these uncivilized peoples. They're not going to give them credit for what happened, right? And today, the irony is that, you know, those who are very indigenous or are into that movement, you know, give them the credit as well, right? Without crediting the other Native peoples who participated in this. So you're actually contributing to that narrative of Europeans that say, you know, we took all over all you little Indians or all you little whatever, right? So I, I, that's why another reason why I challenge this narrative is, is because it's not true. First of all, it's not true. And second of all, it doesn't help anybody. Right. Uh, so I, I just wanted to share that uh, to show that uh, this conquest was way more complex. I know I talked about smallpox last week, um, but again, native auxiliaries and African uh, conquistadors um, and specifically from northern Africa and West Africa. Um, but of course, it, just to say this as well, these individuals, again, their descendants um, or at least their people, they didn't benefit from this conquest. The majority of the folks who did were obviously Spaniards and Europeans, more specifically Criollos um, and Peninsulares. Uh, but again, this conquest is way more complex. And again, for, for specifically for black conquistadors, you had hundreds of them who participated in this conquest. So I wanted to share this video, talk about this information. Uh, links will be in the description section. I not know if this is Flo, Rasistan. Take a stand to understand. Peace out. Racing, not civilization, but hate and devastation. Out of disaster, my people are born. Born slave and master, internally torn. 1821, the say I am free from my caste system that still affects me. Runaway slaves, said it when this land born in 1849, it gets out of hand. Jim Crow laws create segregation. The brown black struggle, reunification. I'm so sorry. Been said.